I wanted to investigate the most efficient ways of getting a smooth needle felted finish and answer some of the questions you might also have, such as does the type of wool you use make the needle felted item smoother and not fluffy? How do you get a felted finish that isn't holy? And do you need to buy special needle felted needles? Or are there other methods you can use that don't cost anything? So let's get started on finding the ultimate method to get that elusive, perfectly smooth finish. First, I wanted to test out two new needles that I recently bought. I wanted to find out if buying specialist needles was really necessary or whether you could get the same results with just a fine 40 gauge triangular felting needle. But I also wanted to make sure it was a fair test so that it was just the needles we're comparing and not how much it's been felted. So I decided in my wisdom that I needed to count how many times I stabbed the wool with each of the needles. I'll talk about how I went about that in a minute. I also used exactly the same wool for each one. So I needle felted three shapes out of coarse carded Jacob wool to create a basic round shape, making sure they were all the same firmness. Then using merino roving or tops wool for each one, I coated them using three different needles. Now if you've watched my when to stop stabbing video, you'll know I nearly drove myself dotty counting the number of times I stabbed the wool and after making that video I swore I'd never count my stabs again but I couldn't see how it would be a fair competition otherwise so I came up with a cunning plan. I created a rhythm of stabbing that was 10 stabs so that I only had to count the tens and note down the hundreds. So I could speed up this rhythm and it meant that the counting wasn't slowing down the stabbing. For the first shape I used a 42 gauge triangular needle which is a really fine needle that has less barbs and the barbs are grouped down towards the tip of the needle. For the second shape I used a 40 gauge twisted or sometimes called spiral needle. This is supposed to be good for firming and smoothing an item and from what I had read doesn't leave as many holes in your work so I was interested to see the results from this one. The third shape was coated using my trusty 40 gauge triangular needle that I use virtually all the time. It's quite a fine needle but slightly thicker than the 42 gauge. I find it a good all rounder for smoothing and for detailed work. The 40 gauge has slightly more barbs than the 42 and they're more spread out along the shaft. So after counting and stabbing each head 6,000 times I had a look at them but they weren't really felted enough so I stabbed each one of them a further 4,000 times so that they'd all had a total of 10,000 stabs each. During the last 500 stabs I focused on trying to reduce the fuzziness by angling my needle at about 45 degrees to the surface to try to catch as many of the fibres as possible. By the way, are there other types of specialist needle felting needles that you'd like me to test out? Let me know in the comments. So in doing this I found the twisted needle seemed to work very efficiently but looking at the finish on both my usual 40 gauge triangular needle and the 40 gauge twisted I didn't think there was much difference in them. The twisted needles does seem to have made the head a bit firmer which is fine but it's also left about the same amount of holes in the wool as my 40 gauge triangular needle. At this stage, just looking purely at the way the needles perform, there seems to be a clear leader, the 42 gauge triangular needle. It's left a lot less holes in the fine merino wool which I think has given it a nice smoothness to the finish. However, there's still a lot more fluff or fuzziness than I wanted. Plus there's other factors to consider, such as the type of wool I've used. As I say here, I've used fine merino roving or tops, so I was curious whether a carded thicker wool would felt smoother. So I coated one end of this core wool sausage with some light blue coloured carded wool. This wool isn't a fine merino wool, however it's finer than the carded Jacobs wool that I use for the core of items. Then I coated the middle section with some hand carded cheap merino roving or tops. As you can see, I hand carded it as it comes in long strands and I thought mixing it up like this might make it easier to get it smoother. By the way, I bought this cheap merino wool off Amazon to see what it was like. It's manufactured by Salidi. You get 45 colours in the pack, 3 grams of each, so only a very small amount of each colour. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a full review on this wool. So then for the other end of the sausage, I used the same cheap merino roving or tops without carding it, just wrapping it round. To make things fair, I counted yet again and stabbed each section with the 40 gauge triangular needle for a thousand stabs. I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> then I checked what they looked like and all of them still seemed a bit fuzzy. So I needle felted each section for a further thousand stabs. And in the same way as before, I focused on trying to reduce the fuzziness by angling my needle for the last 500 stabs. Looking at my blue felted sausage, it looks like the light blue carded wool is still quite fuzzy and had quite a few strands coming off it. The uncarded merino tops on the right also has a few strands but not quite as many with the section in the middle which was the hand carded merino roving or tops looking the least fuzzy.
accuracy. So now that I'd figured out which type of wool and which needles gave the best results, I wanted to see if any of the other methods I'd heard about, such as cling film or ironing, worked. And if they could save you time stabbing, or save you having to buy specialist needles to get that smooth finish and less fuzz. So you could think of this section as the technical round of the Great British Stab Off. We've got four contestants, they're all starting with an arm which has been shaped with core wool. Then each arm has been coated with hand-carded merino wool, because that's what I found was best in my previous experiment. This was done using a fine 40 gauge triangular needle, stabbing each arm 2,500 times. Oh yes, yet yeah, more counting of stabs was involved. The things I do for YouTube. In other words, all four of the contestants are starting with an arm that's been felted exactly the same way so far. And as you can see, all of them are equally fuzzy and about the same smoothness. Our first contestant on the purple mat is going to wrap their arm in cling film quite tightly, making sure it's sealed and put it to one side overnight. That's a bit easy. They can go and have a rest from all that counting. Our second contestant on the yellow mat is going to iron the arm with a travel iron, being careful not to burn herself by holding it with some pliers. Apparently, applying heat in this way with an iron or hair straighteners can help get rid of some of the fuzziness. We'll see how this contestant gets on later. The third contestant on the orange mat has gone for a much more traditional method of trimming the stray hairs from the arm to get rid of the stray fibres. But will it be enough to be better than the others? The fourth and final contestant is going to use the needle that came out the best in my earlier test, the very fine 42 gauge triangular needle, and stab the arm for a further 4,000 stabs to see if it's just a matter of stabbing enough times with the specialist needle. Again I use the technique of angling my needle and dragging it along the surface to help catch some of the stray fine fibres. Now is the moment you've been waiting for, the culmination of all these experiments. Having taken the best type of wool, the carded merino, and the best needle, the 42 gauge triangular, and pitted that against other methods of getting a smoother and less fuzzy finish, the results are in. So at the time of filming this, if we're judging on lack of fuzziness alone, I would say that the trimmed arm is the best, closely followed by the cling film. However, this footage is straight after it had been in the cling film for 36 hours. And while I was editing this video, I was curious as to whether the cling filmed arm would stay looking this good. Good. So I went back to check on it after it had been in a bag and put to one side for several hours. Hmm, looking at the purple cling filmed arm now, um, yeah, not so great. As I suspected, after a while of being free from the cling film, the stray fibres have reverted to type and are sticking out everywhere. If you look at it compared to this orange trimmed arm, you can see the difference. The cling film arm is now probably as bad as the ironed arm, which also had a lot of stray fibres. However, all three of the arms that were felted with the 40 gauge needle are still showing quite a few holes. So if we're taking the lack of holes into consideration as well, the grey 42 gauge needle was the best in creating a smooth looking surface and not leaving holes. However, there's still quite a few stray fibres, even after stabbing 10,000 times. So combining my favourites, I trimmed the arm that was felted with the 42 gauge triangular, and I think this gave me the best overall results to get a smooth and less fuzzy finish. But you might want to try some of the other methods which involve less stabbing. But before you worry about getting a smooth finish, you'll want to make sure you've felted the core of your item firm enough so that it's easier to add face details. And in this video here, I'll show you exactly how many stabs it takes to do that and which needles work best depending on the type of wool you're using. So you might want to watch that next by clicking here. Thanks for watching.